is Fabian Minix Sr. Go by Bo Business 804. Um, from Richmond, Virginia. Been here my whole life. That's the South Side. Um, left high school doing music and mechanics. Been doing that for 10 years and got into trucking. Left the trucking field and came back home doing the music and might do some mechanic work now too. But yeah, that's pretty much how life been over the last 20 years. <laughs> My music um, now is strictly for the kids um, to show them, to help them. Cause as right now in the market, I know what it was like being 20, 18, not a lot of money, but all the talent and passion in the world. So when I created Stay Better Productions, it was to give the kids a platform to do their thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, same thing with um, open mic platforms and other genres that I'm creating is the each one teach one for the youth. So, yeah. Whoa, okay. Well, for a while, I just found out from my primary care doctor that I was, uh, had high blood pressure. I didn't understand I had high blood pressure until I was, what, 20? No, 32, I think. Um, got my CDL, um, taking physicals on the daily. And every time I would go, they would say, whoa, Mr. Minix, your blood pressure's up. Whoa, Mr. Minix, your blood pressure's up. So probably by the, the fourth year, which was my fourth physical, they say I need to go see a primary care. So when I go do that, um, she let me know my blood pressure was elevated and they took my lab work and sent it off to the kidney specialist. And this was diagnosed me with, actually, hold on, I want to say this exactly correctly what it's called. Chronic kidney failure, stage uncontrolled blood pressure. That's what it was called. Chronic kidney failure, <clears throat> uncontrolled blood pressure is what caused it. So um, after that was done, um, I went to the kidney specialist and that's when they um, told me my stage, let me know about um, dialysis, in-home dialysis. And I'm sitting here like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, um, you can't do this, can't do that. I was put on lift restriction for a while. Um, the hurting part was taking my, what's the, um, what's the paper call? Shoot. Taking my, um, my restriction sheet to my job and they telling me that they can't accommodate me from my new restrictions, which was I couldn't lift over 25 pounds. I couldn't stand for over a certain amount of time. I had to rest all the accommodations that my job you needed to do to do the job. So um, at that point, it was disability. And from that point, my life changed. I'm a hemodialysis nurse and I've been working in the field for approximately 30 years. Hemodialysis is when a person's kidneys stop functioning and you need that in order to sustain life. Uh, when the patients get there, we access their fistulas or grafts in their arms with two needles and we hook them up to the machine and they run anywhere from two hours and 45 minutes on up to uh, four and a half hours depending on the um, size of the patient and how well their blood is cleaned. We check their labs monthly to see how they're doing. Yeah, uh, so I think a lot of young people, especially uh, brown skin and black skin, they do not seek out health care. Um, there's been a huge mistrust that leads back to the Tus Tuskegee Airmen who, as you know, were injected and syphilis, they all died. It was horrible. So 
the mistrust of the white man, of the doctor, because they were all white and men, that mistrust was handed down from generation to generation. So that's my belief of why a lot of men and women do not go to the doctor. I think it's important to seek out a doctor who you're comfortable with, whether they're Asian or Hispanic or Indian or black or, or white. You know, you just have to be comfortable with who is treating you and always ask questions about your lab work and your blood pressure and have your diabetes, you know, diabetes test. You don't, you don't want to end up on dialysis. You want to do everything you can to prevent it. Ali, Vito Quattro, my real name Van Derek Hamill. Um, here today to talk to y'all, just just be more transparent. A lot of people be saying uh, I don't open up enough, so I guess we're gonna start it now. I just seen the red bird flat back. So yeah, that just let me know we on cue. What's up? Um, I do dialysis. Um, due to renal failure or kidney failure, but I, I found out about uh, my kidney disease probably when I was like 23, maybe 20, 23, 22, in between 22 and 24, or some of that range, because I was like working a lot. Um, but to tell you the truth, I really feel like some of it, um, come from just bad eating habits in the past. That, like my blood pressure had got out of control. But when I first found out about my blood pressure, I got food poisoning. And it was just, they, it was elevated, so they just thought it was from the food poisoning. And then like when I went back to my checkup or whatever, um, it still was like that. So that's when they started I guess red flagging me or whatever. And a um, couple of months later, I was like diagnosed with uh, chronic kidney disease. So, I mean, I ain't really feel no type of way about it. Really, really how I really found out I was sick, period. Um, I didn't know nothing was going on, honestly. And I one day was at the studio and like my this at my one of my partner's house. So I could spend the night if I choose to or whatever, whatever. So that was the plan. I spent the night but you know, just recording late. Then we get to about maybe one some two in the morning. Just chilling, all my partners, we blowing or whatever. And I have to go use the restroom. And like when I go use the restroom, I was peeing, urinating, whatever you wanna, you know. Um, and, 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 and a blood clot came out, but I was like, I'm tripping. I don't think I just seen that, but I felt it too. So I immediately like panicked, you know what I'm saying? But I couldn't tell nobody I was embarrassed as fuck or didn't know what the hell was going on. So. I went to the store, I got the biggest cranberry juice I could find. <laughs> and just dumped it that night. And then when I woke up the next morning, I peed before I went to sleep. Nothing. Woke up the next morning, had to pee. First thing, you know, that's one of the first things we got to do as a man. Or a male. Uh, pee. Next morning. Nothing. I'm like, I'm tripping last night. That ain't just happened. I must was tripping. And I get to work. I was a assistant manager at Family Dollar. Get to work. Yeah, I got a pee. Guess what? Guess what I see in the toilet? Blood clot. Oh, shit. So, you know, that was... I went to the hospital that day to make a long story short. And that's really when I really knew shit was like... Something going on. Yeah. Like, I been here to know about the... <clears throat> chronic kidney disease or whatever but 
when that happened, that's when I was like, yo, like, I don't know about this shit, you know what I'm saying? At one point, to be real, you can't even say dialysis to me. Like I had been in the hospital a couple times from the from the kidney disease or whatever. Um, and the doctors like already know me. Like, uh, don't don't come in his room. Like to say the D word. Like, don't say dialysis to me. You don't come in my room and say dialysis to me. Like, that's really how I was rocking. I don't want, don't even speak it to existence to me. And that, and I stayed strong for like years, bro. Like, I found this out probably when I was like, like I say, in between 22 and 24. I didn't, I didn't just start dialysis until. March of 2019, and how it's ironic of all this because I was working at the same hospital that I started dialysis, which is MCV. That's the same hospital I was born in. But um, just speaking on MCV, like I had to do this just for the whole story. I right, so I was born too much premature, so I had to. Get Oh, shit like that. So this been a struggle. So MCV been new by me and without you know what I'm saying. But so anyway, that was at three days old. So that's seven months and three days old that I had to go through that. So this been a journey forever, forever. You know what I'm saying? Uh I to be real, I really like dialysis more when I started in the hospital. And and why I was saying it was ironic because I was doing uh, deliveries to um, the medical supply stations and my station was the dialysis station. So pretty much everything that I had to go through previously before I started, I was stocking that stuff up. It was like God was getting me ready for that or something. You know, so I really feel like that's part of a testimony. You know, cause who who gonna be stocking up dialysis and stuff and and, and then like <laughs> a week later I'm 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 a, uh, I did they stocking this stuff for me. Or I might have stocked something up for myself. Dustin Dinsmore was born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. I'm a dialysis tech. Well, the first thing is, with my very first treatment, they just threw me on the machine and didn't say anything, how long I was gonna run for or anything, what the purpose of dialysis was. They just kind of threw me on there and four hours later I was getting off. And I didn't really know anything about that, so I like to make sure my people know, my patients, they know that what actually is going on, like how long they're gonna run for their first treatment why they're running this time and what dialysis actually does for them. But dialysis is basically just, it filters your blood like your kidneys can't anymore. So it helps leach impurities out of the blood and make sure that there's no toxin buildups or anything. And we check that by, by blood work every week. We check that just to make sure everything is working properly. And we do have this, um, like a scale we go off of adequacy and it helps um, to help us understand that you're getting a proper treatment. Well, I, the journey really started when I was eight years old. I got hypertension and <clears throat> kidney stones and just a lot of like nosebleeds and stuff. And from there, from eight to 21, I know that's a big stretch, but eight to 21, I showed very little symptoms and we didn't know what was going on until one day I was just felt tired and I passed out at work. <clears throat> and I told my mom, I was like, we need to go get checked out. And then what happened was I got gout really bad and, um, I went and got checked out for the gout, and they said my um, kidney function was very, very low, like 10% function, and that was the first time I ever heard of like what kidneys actually do, and from there on, <clears throat> the journey started pretty quickly. I got 
referred to a nephrologist, and within a week from that, I was on dialysis. All right. Now, I didn't um, choose to have a transplant really on my own. It was a lot of pressure from the doctors and staff around me. I, um, I was young, a good case, otherwise pretty good health besides kidney failure. And they, um, they tell me it was a better option than staying on dialysis. And at this point, after getting my research and being on, both on dialysis and the kidney recipient, I would rather be on dialysis. Uh, first of all, the medication you take, the immunosuppressive medication, is very, very strong medication. So much so, in fact, that the medic, one of the medications I take has paralyzed my stomach. It's called gastroparesis. It's, um, I don't know, it's just one of those things you can't really control, but they knew what it was, and I didn't really get a warning from it. They, I got a, they told me a lot of stuff, they, as in the transplant center did. They told me a lot of things, but they never mentioned any of these things that can be super harmful to your body. And I'm in like a perpetual state of, I don't know, I just don't feel good often, and a lot of it's from the medication. I'm on a water, I do water and tea. Um, no alcohol. Um, it's, it's, everything's broken down into portions. Um, I still um, urinate, so I can eat oranges, grapes, not oranges, but tangerines, grapes, such stuff like that, salads. Um, they give you different pills. Different people have to take different pills depending on your systems. But um, I do take medicine for whatever meal I eat. And that was uncomfortable out for a while, but you get used to it, you know, because your kidneys is not filtering out your digestive system. So for me, I can't eat as much, and all the tasty stuff I would like to eat. It's more so eating healthy, and so. Going back and forth in court um, started my stress, I can say, because you leave the courtroom feeling like ain't nobody here to help the black man. Um, and me being a humble, cool person, easy to go on, I don't want to call or say a pushover, but just like a, I ain't worrying about it, push it to the side type of guy. You can say it build up. And then that build up came no sleep several times in custody battles, trying to pick my kids up. Police will come, situation, my kid looking at me, my kids is looking at me like, I want to go, Dad, and the mom is doing what she do to just escalate situations. Um, several of those, literally being in and out of the court eight times a year for custody battles are trying to take the kids from me and me going this. I'm not giving you my kids. I gotta go to work. I don't have time for this. Six times a year. Child support, not child support, but custody battle cases like this. Judges knowing my name personally. It was it was a hassle. Um, um, that's a lot of stress. You're still paying child support and still doing for your kids on top of it, and still fighting to win your kids, um, is a stressful battle all in itself. And like I said, just take it with a grain of salt. They never ask men, are they, is you okay? Like, I ask all my brothers, I be like, nah, bro, you all right? If you ask your homie right now, you good? He gonna say, yeah. But inside, he not. We men, that's what we do. Now I'm gonna take care of my own. So with that mentality, over time, I guess you could say it just, it just, it just built up. I stayed busy so I can cope with it. Um, I guess not thinking about it, but I'm a dad who don't think about their kids. I'm 40, I'll be 40 this year. And I'm still thinking about my kids that I've been fighting for since I was 2000. My son was born in 2002. 2002. 
into 2021 and still going through the same battle with the same situation as everybody's story. So all those things is what caused the blood pressure to stay elevated, which caused the kidneys problems to cause me to have to be on dialysis. Um, just hearing those words, kidney disease, I was like, what the hell? You know, I don't know where a person feels like that has cancer or something, but to me, that shit was like, I got what? <laughs> so, um, incorporating that into my new life structure, the new struggle of me now is, um, I, uh, I like to travel. I can't travel as much, and when I do travel, I have to incorporate the treatment into my travel time. So that makes the little things um, a little hard, time to time. Um, when I was young, I'm Superman. I ain't think, ain't think nothing was wrong. I could take on the world. You know that dude with the globe? We hold the globe up and shit? That was me. Um, and like, I, I always plan big, big plans for, the, for my future. Um, never think this, this way happen and um, I see a lot of friends in their 20s, 30s that's, that go through the same thing, that's passionate about what they do, that try to do this. Um, a lot of us have toxic friends, I mean friends that are in toxic relationships and you try and help them out and, and you can just almost see where their life going to go if you keep dealing with it. But stress, I can't stress enough, is the number one cause of blood pressure. And um, it's just, it just sad for us black young men, especially coming out of um, government assistant facilities, facilitation, you could say. Um, we stress a lot over just the system itself and being black. So, I mean, I can't stress over the word stress. Stress, blood pressure, and kidneys go super well together, and it's a silent, I mean silent hit up, you know what I'm saying? So, um, just so they know, well, I'm gonna say just so y'all know that people are born without kidneys, and it, it, age don't play a part. Uh, only thing I can say about dialysis is that 2020, Dialysis is not old school anymore, so no, you don't get on dialysis and die. That's not the truth, you know what I'm saying? So um, I had to just narrate that in there because everybody I talked to, oh, you about to die. And in the beginning part, until I got control of it, um, I had to really research it for myself to find out that 2020, is they, they really got their hands on, they really got their hands on dialysis itself and this system, because yes, I know of all, a lot of older people who pass away, but that was on an old system now, so. Um, okay, that's a great question. So treatment, treatment is different depending on your center, I can say that. Um, I have other partners who go to different facilitation, and I once, um, I get treatment here in Richmond, and I also went to the same, center in Florida, and the service was different. Um, um, but my center, um, when I first got stuck the first day, um, the nurses were very educational. Um, they felt, they, they walk you through it. Um, this was my experience. My friend's first experience wasn't the same one. Um, they coached me. I asked a lot of questions. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, what are you doing? What is that for? What is this for? Is this going to hurt? Why do you do this? Da, 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 da. And they were very calm. Mr. Minutes, this is this. And um, for some reason, I was blessed because I haven't met a nurse yet who comes to you and that educates you as she do her job. The first nurses that I had, the first set of nurses educated me as they worked with, did they dialysis treatment to me. That's why I'm knowledgeable, knowledgeable of the machine, um, what it does, and how it operates. Um, 
my friend's story is that um, he was scared because um, I was telling him how my center was. And he was like, man, I ain't do that. Let it just stuck me. Um, and um, they just told me, sit back. I couldn't do this. And he, they just was shoving stuff to me without explaining nothing to me. And I was like, oh, Lord. So it, 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 it made me appreciate the education I was getting. So I can, I can, you know what I'm saying, share. That's why I share, share that, that piece. But. So when you get diagnosed with kidney failure, you're usually put in the hospital because you feel horrible and find out all of a sudden that your kidneys aren't working. So a catheter has to be placed and it goes into your heart. They have two lumens that hang out and that's what we hang, that's what we hook you up to the machine with. Until we can get a, an access placed in your arm, a fistula or a graft, and then once that's matured and healed, we access that for the blood flow and then the catheter is removed and that's what they use for their dialysis treatment as a fistula or a graft. The length of time is determined by the physician. The patients are on a special diet. Um, they can't eat bananas, orange juice, oranges, anything high in potassium. Uh, they usually instructed to eat foods high in protein um, and basically just try and stay healthy until you can get a transplant. Uh, hypertension is a big one. You could walk around for months with high blood pressure and not even know it. You could go for a test somewhere or even sitting in C you know, CVS checking your blood pressure and you're like, oh, that, you know, that's really high. I better go have it checked out. You never know it. You could have headaches for a while. That's side effect of high blood pressure. Um, that's why it's important for people to go to their checkups and for their yearly exams. Have your blood pressure checked, and, you know, stay healthy, keep your weight down. You don't want to be at risk for diabetes. Once you have high blood pressure, it usually comes high cholesterol. Um, and then one thing just starts the ball rolling, and next thing you know, you have your labs checked again, and then your kidneys, you find out your kidneys are failing. And that could take, if you're having a good nephrologist, they can coach you along and tell you what you should be eating, what medications you should be taking to protect your kidneys. There's blood pressure medication out there that can actually do harm to your kidneys. So it's important that if you ever are diagnosed with hypertension, you should seek out a nephrologist, not just a primary care doctor. They will order all of your medications for you and tell you what you should and shouldn't be taking to help you not go on dialysis. My advice to people who are thinking about getting a transplant is do your research, find a good team that's willing to help you research, and always, never take a doctor's word 100%, always do your own research and talk to folks around you that can help you better understand your situation. Now, transplant is not for everybody. It is really, truly not. I was young, 21, and I'm still, feel like I'm recovering from it eight years later. Just do your own research and Make sure you're comfortable with everything before you make a huge decision. Yes, I'm, I'm actually honored to help uh, educate and hopefully people will listen and stay healthy and have their blood pressure checked, stay off of dialysis. If you would say what message I have to give to people, um, don't let, don't let, don't let hard times define you um, or when when things happen in your life, you know, like look at all the stuff you've been through. You, you look at me, all the stuff we've been through and how many times in the past where we was going through it and we like, man, I don't know how to get through this or, Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like you're seeing like the worst problem in the world. You know, motherfucker might was ready to get evicted or anything. You know, just anything crazy. But like, look today, we looking back on it. 
So I must want that bad, must want that hot. You know what I'm saying? Going through this battle, I wasn't alone. My whole family supported me. Um, uh, along my journey, I ran across awesome people. Like I said, my clinic is awesome. Um, so I found out there's a whole community out there, like dealing with kidney failure. Well, they call it kidney disease. I hate the word disease, but um, in my search to find out about this whole thing, it was scary because there was nowhere I could find it on my terms of educating myself about it. Um, words I didn't understand, systems I didn't know about, um, and nowhere to go, no direction. Um, so the point of this whole documentary is for y'all to travel and journey with me through an educational path about kidney disease. So for future terms, the kids got somewhere to go. Cause this, 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 this problem is always gonna be here. I just found out people get born without kidneys. They, so they gotta, they, they put on dialysis from junk. So um, probably have a GoFundMe coming soon. YouTube channel coming soon. Um, might even have a name for it coming soon. But we gotta do something about it and I'm here to start the process.